So for years and years and years, I've I've been the husband of a, just a beautiful wife, beautiful daughters. They have always made me publicly look better than I am. I finished up my dental career and retired. And for a guy who's worked his whole life, you know, um, that's a hard transition, really. The issue has been the psychological part, you know, of, of, okay, now what do I do as a man and the provider who, you know, what do I do now? So the Lord has, has helped me in that transition. And then spiritually, as you, you, you come up through the ranks and you're always kind of a church leader and a prominent member in church and teach Sunday school or all those things, and now we're not. So now where are you, Lord? What am I doing now in Portland, Tennessee, of all places? You know, when we first came to GC, we had been through, um, you know, he's talking about the retirement, but during all that time, we were actually going through a real personal storm and we were worn out from it emotionally, physically, spiritually, just absolutely worn out. It had been going on for years, and our church had closed down, as many had closed, and it was just turning into more than two weeks. And then we just said, you know, we're, we're missing it. Let's, let's see if there's anywhere open. That's when we were led to GC, um, felt the power of God. Quite frankly, experienced that in a long time. It was just a, a real draw, that just that power, powerful um, spirit of God that was in every service. Just caused us to decide to stay. Well, yeah, it wasn't. It was an easy decision. I told Pastor Brandon one time. You know, we've been in so many different churches over the last decade, and a lot of. I mean, you hear a lot of preaching, but you don't necessarily hear the voice of God. So when we came to GC, and I told Brandon this, I said, I appreciate. Just keep doing what you're doing because when you speak, I can easily hear the shepherd's voice, you know? So we have needed just a place to get our feet back under us, to rest. Weather um, the storm. Yeah, it was just a real kind of a, a time of, uh, of, of resting. Um, first of all, get through the end of that storm. Um, and that happened but probably about a year into GC. Um, and then um, we have really just needed to get our strength back. We literally get our strength back. Um, and I appreciate that GC has given us that opportunity. We are both, you know, part of small groups and we appreciate that. We've appreciated what that's been to our lives. And we are both serving. We look forward to, to serving, serving more. So I'm realizing God is still providing. He is still has something for me. And we just need to be still and know that it's coming, that he's still in control. So when I see the Lord, I want him to hug my neck and say, you did good. So that's what I want. And uh, we're just not there yet. So often in our lives, we have been obedient when we didn't feel like it. It's because we knew our children were watching us. And then you've raised them and you feel like you've done it. Well, then come the grandkids and you want their eyes to see obedience also. So it's endless um, to uh, want to be that example for that next generation. Um, because no matter how old my adult daughters get, I still want them to see me being obedient. And no matter how old my grandchildren will get, I still want them to see me being obedient. So it's, it's a, a, a motivation whenever you are maybe just tired and well, but see, that was my my parents' foundation, my my grandparents' foundation, you know. And when you th you think about generation, 
and the generational blessings that I am living under because my grandmother, she loved the Lord. And I know she prayed for me before I was born. And so we're just living under the blessing, that generational blessing of that. And so I'm reaping the benefits of the previous generation. God's faithful.